Hi, I'm Michelle Reisman and I teach middle school art in Maplewood, New Jersey. I got a grant for myself and the other two-dimensional art teacher. I happened to work at a camp where Maplewood Shop had a class and I saw the reactions of the campers carrying the pieces that they made like they were precious gems and they were just so into the moment of whatever they were doing and there was such pride and they were like don't touch this it's mine and I said okay there's something here we need to find a way we made products from start to finish starting with a sketch working all the way to a finished product that could be stained or painted and functional in some cases and just decorative in others they got to actually design their own pieces. They got to assemble them without simply using the go-to medium in my classroom, which would have been glue. And they got to use screws and hammers and nails and planes and tools they've never used before. I went out and bought for them gold and silver leaf because we wanted to get something metallic and I had never worked with that before. So it was a learning experience for all of us. It was kind of really cool because I got to bring in a different material in a different way and we got to use other tools and other materials in the decoration end of it that we would never have used. Um, I think some of them were a little apprehensive at the beginning. Some of them were just ready to dive right in and we had to remind them that there were some safety precautions that they needed. There were right ways and wrong ways to use the different tools. What was hard was making sure that everybody was kind of getting everything all at the same time. Um, making sure that everybody was happy with what they were doing, that everybody understood how to use all of the tools properly, that they were all taking all the precautions, that everybody was standing how they should be standing, that nobody was getting in somebody else's way that could inadvertently get hurt. The structures got really big. They took a while, it was a lot of wood, I would try to scale it down. I don't know how I will do that because I did want them to get something substantial out of it, but I realized that some of the pieces that were like a foot and a half wide were it's a little big. <laughs> For some of them, they got to overcome a fear, fear of the unknown, a fear of something that could be in a sense dangerous using sharp tools. And I think it gave them a real sense of pride and accomplishment when they got something that would fit and that would make a perfect joint and whatever they were trying to accomplish when it worked, it was definitely a sense of accomplishment when they got to cut a curve that they had drawn and they didn't have to stop in the middle. They didn't break a saw blade or something like that. It was definitely good for them. Well, there was one girl in particular who I remember who was not very happy with her clay piece at all. She, I think, was the first person done with her wood piece. She was just working on it and really persistent and was so thrilled with her finished piece. I remember it was like it was a different person from the person who was unhappy with the way her clay piece came out. I would still love to do something similar where they're making a structure out of wood maybe more functional, maybe more like a little footstool that they could then set something that they've made in ceramics and put that as like two projects that work together. As much as you can try to get it into your program, do it. I worked to figure out how I could infuse it into my curriculum with what I already do so that I was using wood as the primary medium but not the only medium if you can work it into your curriculum and financially can afford the materials and things the kids will definitely love the idea of it because every class that didn't get to do it wondered when it was their turn and it was really never going to be their turn mm -hmm.